The mixed situation. Okay, so, I am not quite sure exactly why I am here. I mean, I know why I'm here, but I don't know the extent of it. I have been searching the internet for hours now trying to make sense of this all and I have landed here. This weekend, my cousin who I haven't seen for years came to visit and stayed the night last night. He and I are pretty carefree, party-loving guys on the occasions these days that we get a chance to let our hair down and given it's been a long overdue catch-up, it's fair to say that we smash the drinks pretty hard. We do hold our booze pretty well though, neither of us are violent nor in any way bad drunks, so what I am saying is, there is no real concern about our behaviors, even if we drink copious amounts. Three months ago, my fiancé and I moved in together. We had been in what I thought was an amazing, positive and balanced relationship for two years prior to her and I moving in together, but we did live about 80 kilometers apart. She attends university and I work full time. The relationship has been excellent. Well until now that's what I thought. I feel like it's been mutually supportive, and I have never had any questions or issues with trusting her. It has never even entered my mind to suspect anything. Anyway, last night, my cousin and I were suitably intoxicated, talking crap with each other downstairs in the living room and my fiancé was upstairs in bed asleep, as she had work, part-time waitstaff at a breakfast venue, this morning. We were talking about some of the events I used to organize, which my fiancé has assisted with over the years naturally, and I decide. Oh, I have to show you some pics of the events. Knowing that there was pics from the events on my fiancé's laptop, I promptly walk over to the kitchen bench where her laptop is and open it up, switch it on and log in. I haven't really used her laptop before, but I knew the password from some other time I have needed to log in while my fiancé was present for some innocuous reason. Again, I thought nothing of opening up her laptop to use at this time. I am sure she wouldn't have had any problem with it either had it just by chance did not involve the following. So, I was looking for photos. The quickest way I know to find photos is to open a main folder. This should bring up all images in the search location, which was the C drive, main hard drive, in this case. So, images start appearing in the search results and suddenly I notice that some of the images are named fiancé's name, and so on. There is about 30 or so of these images, sequentially numbered with my fiancé's name as the title, but they are unavailable to preview as they had been deleted and were sitting in the recycle bin. Now, keep in mind that my cousin and I were the best part of a bottle of vodka in each by this stage. I jump over to the recycle bin and I see the deleted image file sitting in there, and hit restore. I was obviously curious as to what the images named with her name might be, but I never in a million years would have imagined what I have found. Up pops all these photos of her dressed in lingerie and other very skimpy outfits, posing in various positions. Not nude, but they are definitely highly suggestive shots, inside and some even of her standing outside on a balcony. Immediately it is clear to me that the furniture she is posing with or next to in the indoor shots is furniture in her old apartment from before we moved in together. I also know that this furniture was purchased after we had already been together for a year and after she moved into that place. The pics of her on the balcony are also taken at the same apartment. What happened next is a bit of a blur. I don't remember my cousin saying anything, I think he was just stunned. But next thing I remember, I am upstairs, screaming at my fiancé to get the crap out of bed and get the crap out. I don't remember a whole lot of what happened at this point either. I was damn furious, really mind blown and in absolute shock, as well as solidly approaching intoxication. It was not the ideal state to be in to deal with something like this. There was a lot of yelling and a lot of crying on her behalf, which I don't remember much of. But the one thing I do remember might be absolutely critical to this. She says that she owed some bad people some money and she had to do the photos to clear the debt or something. Her mum is a complete screw-up and in and out of jail etc. and whilst my fiancé isn't anything like her mum and has her crap well and truly together, I could see it as a possibility that she has borrowed money to get her mum out of crap and has now fallen short of paying someone back. Neither of us are total angels, we're pretty street smart and savvy people, so it's not completely outside of the normal for either of us to deal with some unsavory types every now and then. But what doesn't make sense is, I have seen a lot of porn in my time as a red-blooded male. I have been around enough to know that the photos that I have found of her are nowhere near explicit enough to be of any real monetary value, certainly not enough to cover any kind of debt that she claims is the reason they were taken. Critically, she also mentioned the name of a website that I know is involved in adult photography and in fact has a pretty well-known name associated with it. I'm not sure that that has to do with it all right now. I'm hungover as hell, I'm emotionally shattered, I'm completely lost and I feel like my world has just been turned upside down. My fiancé has gone to work, my cousin has left and I'm sitting here trying to put the pieces together by myself. I figured I might as well pour my thoughts out here to some people who might relate rather than just keeping going over and over this in my head. She has either had some random guy round and he and her have taken photos during a romp, or this explanation she has given me has some kind of truth to it. The guy taking photos thing doesn't gel, because you would think they would be more explicit and there would be nudes etc. but these appear set up and purposefully posed. 
The explanation she has given me doesn't add up either, for similar reasons. Any debt significant enough to warrant cohering someone into doing adult-oriented photos would surely mean that said photos were far, far more explicit. Okay, so I've just had a look through the website that she mentioned during the blow-up last night and a few pages in, it comes up with a page of escort profiles. There, smack bang in the middle of the page is a profile with a picture of her. It's one of the pictures that I found last night. The ad for her says on holiday, back soon. Though, it's even got her name, just spelt differently. My head is tingling with adrenaline and I don't know what to do now. She is on the afternoon shift at work now and I won't get hold of her even if I try to call now. I want to message her and ask her what the hell, but everything I have been reading here says I should say nothing until I have more answers. This can't be what it looks like. What do I do? I need to prep some questions for the moment she walks in the door. I am not going to be able to keep this quiet. No matter what we're going to end up talking about these pictures and there's no way I am going to be able to not raise this now. What should I ask? I need ideas. She will likely be home in a few hours. It's just past 3 p.m. here and she usually finishes up on a Sunday at around 4.30 if it's quiet. Still takes her 30 minutes to get home after work finishes though. I'm not sure what to do. Part of me just wants to bury my head in the sand, pack my stuff and be anywhere but here when she comes home. Part of me wants to hug her and hear that it's not what it looks like. Part of me wants to lose my crap at her. To the person who posted above about how do I feel about my fiancé being an escort. How the hell do you think I feel? I'm literally trying to think up any possible way to otherwise explain this. This is the girl I have been in a relationship with for the last three years. The girl who has become part of my family, loved by my parents, and part of my whole life plan now. I want to hear what she has to say to explain this profile. The profile says, on holiday, back soon. Though, which makes sense now that I think about it. If she has moved down with me to where I live, 80 kilometers away from where she was living, then she would likely have to stop because she is living with me full time. The real kicker that has just fallen into place for me now is that she has been saying since she moved here that she was planning on going back to the city where she was living during the next holidays and planned on spending a lot of time catching up with friends etc. that would explain the reason for her holiday posted in the ad and how she might have been planning to be able to return to it. Signing off for now, she could be home any moment from now and I need some time to gather my thoughts and prepare for whatever happens. I'll come back to update you all with her response to this escort thing later tonight if I can. When she got home from work last night things started off pretty quietly. We both kind of avoided the subject for about half an hour and then I told her that we need to talk about what happened and what I found said at night and we should go for a walk because I wanted to be in a calm, outdoor environment where I was already getting some kind of exercise to burn off some of the adrenaline and inevitable raw that was going to build up when the conversation got heated. I also wanted to be somewhere where we weren't holed up in a room so that I could just get the crap out of there or get some space if I needed it. So, we go for a walk and I start asking more about the photos I found on Saturday night. I raise the issue of my doubt in her story for why the photos were taken and I even suggested that if she really was in such a situation that money was owed. Surely, she could have, should have asked me for the cash long before it got to the point where she was having someone take raunchy photos of her. Initially, she claimed that what she told me was the truth and that she was too proud and independent to ask anyone for help, which in some way is true about her after the history of her neglectful junkie addict parents and her having to really be able to rely on herself through most of her upbringing and life. But I still hadn't raised the escort site and profile that I found. So, we're about three kilometers from home at this point and walking down the main road through the CBD area of the city I live, a nice public spot with people around to help ensure we keep the behaviors, tone and volume under control. Things are pretty calm and I'm just letting it be that way intentionally, but then I ask point blank out of nowhere why is there a profile of you on an escort site? And almost without missing a beat, she replies back with these guys are trying to screw me over, and then went on to form a story around that excuse claiming that it's all part of some blackmailing conspiracy that these bad people are holding against her. I called B and asked why they would do that if they got the money and they took those pictures already. I mean, either she still owed them money, they were sleeping with her over even after she paid them the money or she was lying. I know which answer is the clear and obvious one. So, at that point, things started getting heated and we turned back toward home, walking about 50 meters apart from each other and not talking anymore. I got home, grabbed my laptop, some clothes and my backup drives and told her I didn't believe her and that I was leaving for a few days. I told her that her story didn't make sense and when she was ready to tell me the full details that would explain what she is claiming, I will come back and talk. Meanwhile, I have a few other avenues of inquiry that I am going to start looking at today. I just need to psych myself up to do it. For anyone wondering, at this point I am stuck in this stupid zone of half believing her, because I'm wanting to believe her and it's hard to believe this whole thing is real myself, and just being damn angry and knowing she is a blatant liar. But the fact is, this has damaged us already more than likely beyond repair even on her version of it. 
I never in a million years would have thought she would let someone else take pictures like that of her while she was in a relationship, especially one as good as this appeared to be going, and I would have hoped that our relationship was solid enough that she felt she could depend on me to be there for her and have her back if the chips were down. That's why we were engaged after all, isn't it? To have each other's back and rely on each other as a team. If the likely truth is indeed that she has been working as a worker, we're 100% done. But I need to find out the facts either way now. This is too big to let go. I need answers so I can work out what the hell just happened and how the hell I have missed something like this. So many things are falling into place. Like the time I stayed over at her place one night midweek and had a few beverages that night. I was feeling like death when we woke up the next morning when she said she had to go to work, can't remember which it was, and I figured I would just stay in bed there for another few hours and let myself out of her apartment and drive home later, but without actually point blank telling me to get out and go the crap home, that is pretty much what she was telling me. I thought it was really weird that she wouldn't just tell me to stay there till I was feeling a little less hungover because we had been together for well over a year at that point and things between us were pretty solid, so I thought. Or the time we had a little party over at her place with her cousin and a few other friends as well as a few DJs we were touring at an event I was running. Her cousin got a bit tipsy and decided she wanted to sleep with one of the DJs and came into my fiancé's room where we were getting ready to go to bed and asked if she had any protection. My fiancé reached up into the top of her bedroom cupboard and pulled out a box and gave her one. I know, how dumb am I that should have been a moment of what the hell in itself, but no, I am embarrassed to say that I was obviously in such a state of happy trusting bliss that even this completely went right past me without a second thought, or the fact that the roommate that apparently lived in the spare room that her cousin slept with this DJ and that night was never home, ever. Her explanation was that the roommate had a boyfriend that she spent most night with and was barely around. It has dawned on me that there never was a roommate, and that spare room was the room that she used with the guys she saw. Update. Confirmed everything I need to know and more. She denied it at first but then an hour or so after a heated phone call she called back and admitted the truth. It was a short phone call. Basically she just said, it's true, I was an escort. I'm sorry and I don't remember much else after that to be honest. Brain kind of just went blank. The call was barely a minute or so in duration though and I have since sent a message telling her I will be coming to collect all my stuff on said morning while she's at work and asked her to not be there otherwise as I aren't interested in seeing her or dragging this out any further now. The first thing I did was call my mother and tell her the news, just blurted it out to her as soon as she picked up the phone and bawled my eyes out for a few minutes. I have told her I will be taking myself of the lease on the place we have been living and that is now her problem to deal with. I'll be getting tested this afternoon, that goes without saying. I realized the reason why she was sometimes a little later arriving to my place on a Friday night for our usual weekends together was because she was busy sucking some dude's crap and copping a load on the face. Sucks even more that the first thing I would do when she walked in the door was give her a great big kiss on those lips. Oh well, crap happens. I have sent some of the pictures to the admin that posted here and she can do what she chooses with them. They are publicly available anyway by her own choosing and quite frankly I don't give a crap what happens from here. I wanted to let you all know the conclusion to this given I went and opened up about it to you all, but I have a lot to process and get through personally now, so I'm going to leave it at that and wish you all the best. Worst, hangover, ever. I have been unable to sleep and my entire thought process since stumbling on the images on Saturday night has been a one-track mind, unable to think about anything else. So, I have had a fair bit of free time to look for clues to follow up and answers to support the now confirmed facts. I have one of those personalities that allows me to keep the emotion at bay and focus on dealing with the immediate problem. But the flip side of that is, this same personality trait tends to push that emotion so far back. I know myself well enough to expect that the emotional fallout for me is still to come and when it does, it will be very significant. I don't think anyone would disagree that this kind of thing is likely to cause some real emotional scarring and damage if not dealt with properly and once I start to feel that creeping in, I may have to get some counseling to help. So, while it might appear to be a fairly quick and decisive result on this now, I am fully aware that this is likely to come back and haunt me in the not-too-distant future. But importantly, I have now got to the facts, and I have made decisions on and dealt with the immediate problem of the relationship with her accordingly. I am confident these are the logical and rational decisions that will ensure the best outcome for me in this. I'm still discovering stuff. I can't help but keep searching and reading through these escort places etc but I have set a limit for myself on that and will quit doing that after today and wake up tomorrow hopefully having had a good solid sleep. The fact is, the lying and deceit was a deal breaker for me. Standard cheating would have been a deal breaker very likely too. But a coordinated, executed and planned campaign of cheating involving creating ads, burner phones, specifically renting an apartment with the requirements of the spare room for escorting and the overall full-time double life she has well and truly demonstrated she was capable of maintaining in such a compartmentalized manner is just a whole other level of bad. Someone who can do that, to someone they love, but most importantly, to themselves, is an emotionally and or mentally damaged person. 
All the best to them in life, but I'm not prepared to bring that kind of liability into my life. Screw that, and just out of morbid interest's sake, I found details to the hidden bank account she has been saving a lot of the money to obviously, and not considering the fact that she has also been paying normal bills and living fairly comfortably on some of the money she has gotten from this, she appears to have saved about 30k in the 12-month period before she moved here with me. So basic math says, 30 Kelvin at her advertised rate is roughly 111 hours and probably a similar number of random crap she has had in her. Sorry, that is pretty crude, but that is the kind of dark crap going through my mind right now. My comment, wow, that is one of the grossest stories I've heard. So sorry, that is so disgusting and vile. Dated you for two years, expects to marry you, all the while sleeping with complete strangers for money behind your back and then being intimate with you. Utter disgust. Story 2 in 2000, six years after we got married, I immigrated to Canada. My wife did not want to move there. That unfortunately was not the last time she accused me of separating her from her family. Since I moved to Canada and then to the US till 2020, I visited India five times. It was on one of the visits I realized that what my wife considered family was merely her widowed mother. On one of my visits to India, my mother-in-law indirectly accused me of separating her daughter from her by moving to Canada and then to the US. So how is this hurting me? 1. My wife visits India almost every 18 months, spending 3 to 6 months during her visit. On two occasions, she took my daughter out of middle school and stayed with her mom. My daughter was in grade 6, and the school in Canada had no issues with that. On the downside, my daughter spent 6 months at home with her mom and grandmother. I did the math and it appears that my wife has spent 7 to 8 years of the last 26 years away from me to spend time with her mom. My daughter is a spendthrift and went to an out-of-state university. I spent over 120 Kelvin on her tuition, airfare from Phoenix to Dallas, her shopping, Uber, and other avoidable expenses. I have taken out 76 Kelvin from the equity of my house to fund this. I believe that my mother-in-law has been solely responsible for ruining our marriage, with the cooperation of my wife. 1. My daughter came to Canada when she was 3. She's now 23. As much she likes India, she could never settle in India. My wife loves our daughter way too much to go back to India for good. Probably she'll divide her time between our daughter and her mom. 2. No, my wife can't support herself, financially. I haven't arrived at a decision yet. I know that while divorce may be an easy way out, that's not always a solution. I am torn between divorce and finding another solution. I don't know who to pin the responsibility with for the situation. Precisely why I posted here to get different perspectives. I moved out of India, mainly because of the quality of life. As an immigrant that started a new life in Canada and then in the US, I have done well in life. I went there initially by myself, and my wife joined me later. On a side note, my wife says she loves me misses me, admires me on many fronts. On the other hand, when she hears her mom say how much she misses her, that takes precedence over everything. I don't say that her love for her mom is wrong or misplaced. How that's impacting our relationship is what concerns me. If she leaves, cut the strings and divorce. Just move ahead cleanly, respectfully, and as amicably as you can. If she stays, make sure she can stay in contact with her mother as much as possible. Visits. Maybe bringing her to you would be easier. FaceTime. Whatever. Make time for it and support it if she wants to stay. I have been very respectful and have so far got my mother-in-law to both Canada and USA multiple times. I have funded her tickets, stay, health insurance etc. All that seems to be just a band-aid because she misses her daughter the moment she is back in India. To those who think I am not supportive, I have nothing to say except that I have done everything in my power to please people involved. Life is all about doing and I don't know if my being a pleaser made things worse or not. Once again, I say this with utmost humility, not arrogance. I think it is about my MILs need to feel important, loved, and admired. There is nothing wrong in that, except that it has become so overbearing that it could lead to us separating and getting divorced. I remember an incident that my wife mentioned. My wife worked as a teacher in a college, prior to our marriage, in a city that was 500 miles away from where my MIL lived. My wife said that her mom nagged her so much that she ultimately quit her stable job, returned to the city where her mom lived, and took up a job that paid less. The problem is this, my wife realizes that she is being controlled by her mom. She'd say a little bit and stop there. Maybe she feels guilty about saying not so nice things about her mom. So, one part of her says that she loves me, and another part of her says that she must feel guilty because she is not physically close to her mom. This has a lot to do with the guilt tripping that has been going on over the years. My mother-in-law has come to the US and Canada multiple times. When we were in Canada I offered to file for her immigration, but she wasn't interested. She wanted to be in India to be close to her other children. She cannot immigrate to the US because of the current laws. What bothers me is that these long visits four to six months at short intervals is putting a big strain on our relationship. We are growing apart, to say the least. Also, I am the sole breadwinner, and this is putting a very big strain on our finances. 
At my age, as a family we can ill afford these trips. A trip to India at high season could cost four to five thousand, including airfare, stay, shopping and other expenses. I pay for these, her family does not. I think this isn't good for the health of our relationship and finances. And I know that for a fact. On a different note, do you think I could salvage the situation? We haven't taken a trip together, we haven't been intimate in a very long time, work, menopause, stress from small fights, being the reasons. Do you think I could try reworking on this by having some personal time with my wife, taking a trip? Maybe some frequent intimacy would help distract her. I don't know, just asking. There is a facet about my wife that I wanted to mention. All this thing about misplaced priorities apart, she is an extremely kind-hearted, pious, and soft-spoken person. She isn't the kind that can even hurt an ant, or even be unkind even in thought. She is extremely organized and will go to any lengths to help even a stranger, without batting an eyelid. She can make friends in a jiffy and continue lifelong friendships. So, what happened? Everything was hunky-dory till we were in India. I decide to move to the West in 2000 and the troubles begin. Step 1, I go by myself to settle down in the new country. The wife stays with her mom for over a year. The indoctrination, the emotional blackmail begins. She keeps telling my wife how she feels betrayed, let down, lonely because she, my wife, will join me in abroad. Step 2, the wife gets influenced by her mom, starts making long yearly trips to India, we end up raking thousands of dollars in credit card debt. The wife takes my daughter out of school for months on end to join her in her trips to India. Consequences, the relationship is falling apart, the wife keeps getting guilt tripped and we are sinking in debt. Meanwhile the wife keeps threatening me because I separated her from her family, read mom, because the wife's siblings are themselves married and live by themselves. While all this happening, the MIL is living by herself. We have frequent fights and I am guilt tripped to believing that I am a bad person because I separated daughter from mom. Years go by and the relationship is now in tatters, thank you mother-in-law. Your manipulation has worked. Congrats. What now? Fast forward 25 plus years, I feel worthless, down, frustrated, depressed and lose all self-esteem. The daughter who is now 22 joins her mom in isolating me while ruining me financially. She goes to an out-of-state school, runs thousands of dollars in Uber, flight expenses, and I end up discharging her debt. Why did I do that? I am painted in a corner by the mom-daughter duo, and I am a coward and wimp. The daughter becomes a social media influencer gets a high-paying job and thumbs her nose at dad. She is ungrateful and rude, to say the least. Then what? I am very lost, confused, distressed and depressed. Meanwhile I am also busy with work. So why won't I do it? I am a coward, I don't have the courage to do that. There are myriads of questions that cross my mind all those what-if questions. What if I don't succeed in my ex-attempt? What if I am saved and am a nervous wreck? What if I become a vegetable? What if I survive and then have pain for the rest of my life? Then someone tells me that if I killed myself, I would be reborn to relive the rest of my natural life, does it make sense? I don't know. I am also asking myself how I'll hurt my immediate family, my mom, and my siblings. Okay, the wife and daughter won't miss me, but won't I punish others, my siblings, my dear friends with what I did? I don't know, and so I am still alive. Plan B? My plan B is to physically separate from the wife. At some time, we can go in for a divorce. During one of the fights, we had recently I told her that this wasn't working. She didn't say anything except it's okay. I don't know what this means, but for my sanity, for my self-respect and for me to earn towards my retirement, I need to do this. This is not to punish the wife or daughter. This is after all these years, about me. The wife can live with her mom, and the daughter can get on with her life. I have many questions. 1. Am I doing something wrong? My wife is educated, but has never led her own life, doing stuff for herself, for the last 25 plus years. 2. Despite all that she had done with her frequent absences, she's a good person in many ways. I still love her, I am angry at myself for being a wimp. Is this a contradiction of sorts? Should I not be hating her for ruining my life? I can't seem to do that. 3. My question is how do I face the separation? Is there a silver bullet to ease the pain? Does that line even make sense? Or is there a set of rules I can follow to distract myself from the pain? My comment, you're just not attracted to her. That's the reason why you're having these thoughts. Think about the fact you're going to facing this person for the rest of your life. The choice is yours. 